Hello everyone. Yes, it's that time of year again when you need to start planning your summer garden. Some of you sooner than others. Well, I suppose it's never too early to plan, but what about starting your seeds? Is it ever too early to start seeds indoors? And the answer is, of course it is. If you plant the seeds too early, you'll get seedlings that are ready to be transplanted before the outdoor garden is ready for them, and then they will get overgrown, leggy, and they will not be happy. If you plant your seeds too late and you have a short growing season, you won't have any plants to grow outdoors when the time is right. And long growing plants that take 100 days to mature need to get into the ground as early in the season as possible. So to get the timing right, you need to know when your last frost date is and then work backwards to calculate the best time to start your seeds indoors. If you Google frost date calculator, you'll see a few options pop up, and this one is a good site to use from the Old Farmer's Almanac. Let's take a look at this one. Here is what happens when I put in 12084, and as you can see, it comes up with the last spring frost as May 2nd, and also the first fall frost is October 9th, so that gives about 159 days of growing. Unless there's a frost after May 2nd, which often there is, so to be safe, you might want to wait until May 15th to transplant outdoors. And then the growing season is two weeks shorter. So you can see if you don't get some of the long growing plants out there, you're not going to have a harvest to enjoy. And the solution, of course, is to start the seeds indoors earlier. So which plants need more time to grow? Well, before I talk about that, just for kicks, let's see if another website has different frost dates for 12084. Let's try the National Gardening Association. And, well, this is different. There's a narrative here first explaining how to read the chart, which we'll get to in a minute. This narrative is actually good for inexperienced gardeners because while the previous website gave a hard date of May 2nd, this website provides a chart with the probabilities of frost on any given day. And if you're like me, you don't want to take a chance of frost, so 32 degrees might be too liberal since air is colder the higher up you go, and there could be frost in the air that forms and falls to the ground as wet snow, then melts, but does some damage to the tender plants. So let's say instead of 32 degrees, we want to wait until the temperatures are above 36 degrees. So we can see from this chart that on May 1st, there's still a 90% chance of hitting 36 degrees for the last time this season. On May 6th, there's an 80% chance of hitting 36 degrees. But if we look at May 17th, we can see the odds are now 50-50 of getting a 36 degree day or more likely night. And at that point, I'm willing to take a chance and plant. I could wait until June 1st when the chance is only 10%, but that really shortens the growing season. I usually look at May 15th as the date to plant in my area, and you can see the probability of 32 degrees on May 15th is only 10%, so hopefully that's good enough. Or I could just move to a warmer climate, I suppose. Now, how do I know when to plant what? And again, this website, the National Gardening Association, is very helpful. Under the tab Useful Tools, you'll find the Vegetable Planting Calendar. Again, put in your zip code. So let's say we put in 12084. And this tells me that my frost-free growing season is between May 15th and October 18th, which is a bit different from the first site we visited, but still gives around 156 growing days. The other gave 159 growing days, so not much of a difference. Okay, so let's get to our spring planting strategy based on these dates. Some crops, what we call cold weather crops, are hardier and don't mind a little cold, like broccoli, cauliflower, cabbage, lettuce, and spinach, to name a few. These you can start earlier indoors, or even sow the seeds directly in the ground when there's still a possibility of frost. 
On the other hand, plants like tomatoes and peppers are not cold hardy, and you'll have to wait until the danger of frost has passed before planting these outdoors. With such a short growing season, you will want to sow the seeds indoors, not wait to sow them in the ground. This handy chart shows when to sow seeds indoors so that they're ready to transplant into the garden at the right time, depending on the crop. Some types of plants don't do well when you transplant them, so you want to sow them directly in the ground at the right time and not start them indoors. Other plants, you want to sow the seeds indoors because they take a long time to germinate and then mature, and with a short growing season, you need all the days you can get. Let's take a look at the planting schedule for tomatoes in the 12084 zip code. And you can see the seeds should be started around mid-March, and then about two months later, in mid-May, they'll be ready for transplanting outdoors. If you plant them much earlier than that, then they'll be growing indoors for too long and they won't be happy. They will outgrow the containers you started them in, and they also might not be happy with the lighting arrangements. So for the optimal results, plan ahead and sow the seeds indoors at the right time. Or you can visit your garden center in May and buy them ready to transplant, a much more expensive and less rewarding experience. Remember, those who fail to plan, plan to fail. So happy planning, happy planting. Thanks for watching. Bye.